Chapter 28, Mold Your Failure My omelets always turn into scrambled eggs. I start off with confidence as my eggs spread perfectly across the pan in a magnificent circle. Every single time I think, am I an iron chef? As I order a chef's hat off Amazon with one hand, I use the other hand to flip my omelet. 100% of the time, I perform this move prematurely and my omelet breaks into at least three pieces. After staring at my failure for five seconds and attempting to cancel my Amazon order, I grab my spatula and break the eggs into even more pieces. I like scrambled eggs better anyway. Failure doesn't necessarily mean the end of an idea or project. When things don't go the way we anticipate, it's easy to feel like we have to start over, but that's not always the case. Just because one door is closed, it doesn't mean it can't be knocked down or forced back open. I know the quote goes, when one door closes, another opens. But why didn't anyone ever try opening the closed door? Or better yet, finding a back door? I just feel like that quote doesn't factor in effort or imagination or logic. A boss knows that yes, sometimes failure does indeed mean starting over. But a boss also knows that other times failure can be molded into unexpected success. In 2015, I was working on my 12th collaboration of Christmas, a series I do every year that consists of 12 high-profile collaborations with a holiday theme. Each year, I try to make the series bigger and better, obviously, like a boss. And I reach out to people who excite me so that they can excite my audience as well. I work with people like Stephanie McMahon, Adam Devine, Rez Russell Peters, and Gina Rodriguez. That year, I decided to reach out to one of my biggest inspirations, an A-list movie actress whom I adore. I had a good feeling about it because she had a film set to release during the holiday season. You see, when another artist has a new project coming out, it's easier to confirm a collaboration because there's an opportunity for cross-promotion. Apparently, there was an event being held in New York City in two weeks that was aimed toward marketing her upcoming film. Part of the marketing plan was to highlight influential women through a variety of media, including online content. Ding, ding, ding. Hello, I'm a creative online content. How may I help you? My team set up a call for me to pitch an idea for collaboration. I came up with a creative challenge called the Hashtag Girl Love Challenge. The idea was to make a game out of spitting rapid fire compliments at pictures of influ influential women and encourage viewers to, viewers to do the same. Very simple and effective. To my great joy, my idea was well, rece well received and I was all set to fly to New York to shoot the video in just a few days. I was over the moon and not just our moon, Jupiter's moons, all 67 of them. Two days before I was supposed to take off, I still didn't have a flight booked. It made me feel unsettled. It's cool though, I thought. This is how LA functions, super last minute. I continued ironing out the details of my girl love challenge until my manager called me with some bad news. For whatever reason, the shoot wasn't going to happen anymore. I wasn't going to New York and I wasn't going to collaborate with one of my biggest inspirations. Just like that. In a matter of minutes, everything fell apart. I was absolutely heartbroken. For a whole day, I walked around like a zombie completely unmotivated and disappointed. I loved the hashtag girl love challenge so much that I was, and I was bummed that it wouldn't happen. I complained and ranted and then finally tired myself out and went to bed. While lying there unable to sleep, I had a spontaneous thought. What if I didn't need to collaborate with a movie star to do the challenge? What if I stopped focusing on the people I couldn't meet with and started thinking about all the people I did have access to? After all, I believed in the idea more than anything. Right then and there, I sent a, sent a voice note to my management saying that the hashtag girl love challenge would happen regardless and I would need their help. I was going to pry the door back open. Over the next week, I contacted every influential woman I knew, from Grace Helbig to Shay Mitchell, and got them to send me a clip comp complimenting another woman, aka the hashtag girl love challenge. Instead of focusing the whole thing around an upcoming movie, I focused on my channel's demographic and pivoted challenge towards making a positive difference for my large female audience. I released a video featuring 18 influential women as one of my Christmas collaborations, and the response was overwhelming. Countless media outlets picked up the video and it reached the likes of Tyra Banks and Priyanka Chopra, to name a few, who each tweeted about it and took part in the challenge. The hashtag girl love became a global phenomenon. Young girls across the globe were complimenting each other on social media using the hashtag girl love. After all the hype died down, which it eventually did, I thought the hashtag girl love challenge would die too. It might become a once upon a time viral hit. However, the video birthed a passion within me. And in 2016, I hired a team and launched hashtag girl love as a full fledged social campaign. Today, as I write this, hashtag girl love has a complete social strategy and is an episodic series on my channel. 
It got me inside the White House to discuss women's issues with Michelle Obama and recently allowed me to travel to Kenya to learn more about the women's education in the Maasai community. Furthermore, a hashtag girl over Fiki with bracelet was created in partnership with the Me Too We, an amazing organization. Google them. And the proceeds are going toward giving Kenyan girls scholarships to attend secondary school. I also held a workshop in Singapore to teach young girls how to spread girl love. And the venue was completely showed, sold out. All of this happened because my collaboration didn't work out. Every success that girl love has is a direct result of molding the broken pieces of a previous failure. In most negative situations in life, you can create a positive outcome if you just look hard enough. Aside from the hashtag girl love challenge, there is a much greater example from my life in which I took something not so great and made it great. When people ask me what I'm most grateful for in my life, they get confused when I reply, depression. I started making YouTube videos in 2010 because I was trying to make myself happy and escape depression. I thought that if I, I could make others laugh, then I could also make myself laugh. My dedication to YouTube was me self-medicating. It was a pick-me-up, a distraction, and a goal to work toward. To this day, depression is the worst feeling I've ever encountered in my life. It was heart-wrenchingly painful. Everything I have today, every video, success, and opportunity is a direct result of taking that pain and turning it into something positive. Comedy. I'll never have to take a pottery class because I've already molded the most difficult thing. My life. To take a failure and turn it on its head, to make something unexpected out of it, is a beautiful thing. I could have abandoned girl love, the girl love challenge. I could have let my depression take me down a path that led nowhere. But instead, I decided to get my hands dirty with some Play-Doh and create something new. Often, we're too busy being disappointed or upset to recognize that the tools we need to create a new masterpiece are right in front of us. They just require a little rearranging and assembly. Don't let disappointment blind you to potential. Roll up your sleeves, use your creativity as a glue, and mold your success.